All right, so today we're getting back on this guy. Let me show what we're gonna do. We're gonna finish up the fuel system today. I didn't want to, and I'll show you the price, but that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna remove this fuel cell right here. We're gonna do some modifications to it. Let me show what we can do underneath first. So from the bulkhead right here, this is all 10. This pump requires a 12 feed. So this 10 bulkhead, all this line, this filter, everything needs to be replaced from here and here. It may not look like much, but let me show you the cost on these parts. So we'll start right here with the bulkhead and work our way down so you can see everything required, what I'm gonna have to use to replace all this. We've got a nice big boy fuel filter. We got our PTFE line. If you're curious how much this costs, oh, I got it all right here. So we have the hose in and filter, which is 210. We have the bulkhead, which is $17.99. We have the hose in, which is $15.88. We have the 90 hose in, which is $26.99. We have the 45 hose in. We need two of those, which is $53.98. Then we have the 12 a in to 12 ORB, which is the O-ring that goes into this guy right here, which is uh, 3X of those, so it's $37.48, bringing the grand total shipping and everything, $371.59. Sheesh. Yeah, so first, let me clear all this crap out of the way. Uh, here's a little trick. If you don't have an extra set of hands, you can just do this. It works like a charm. Let's have vice grips and all that shit you can't put two hands on. Oops. There we go. Let's get these fittings off. All right, so I have everything ready for operation. Now, one thing I want to talk about first is these filters. All right, so I think this is important for you guys to see. And, you know, subscribe and like these videos if you think this is useful for you guys. But I want you to see this. This is a two and a half inch. This is a 58 millimeter, which is slightly bigger than this, a 50 millimeter. This is your typical, this guy right here is your Evil Energy typical 50 millimeter filter. Now, I want you to see what's very, very, very important. I think their filter is a little smaller, but what a lot of people do is they'll take an aeromotive filter and they'll stick it in here, right? But look at this. Let me get closer on this. All right, so I have all three here and I had to really work hard to get the side off because Magnafield decided to put a bunch of Loctite in this side. So I had to make a tool and hit it with the impact gun to get it off. I didn't want to apply heat to it because I would have ruined these guys right here. But anyways, we got it off. It kind of looks ugly, but it's still going to work fine. So look at this, this is your typical Amazon Evil Energy 50 millimeter filter, right? Look at this, see how much it's pinching the fuel flow going to the other side? Look at that. This is severely limiting your fuel flow. Even if you have tins right here, that doesn't equal up the same amount of area which is around this guy right here. So here we have a 58 and you can see, I would say this is adequate area around this for fuel to get by that lid on the filter to the other side. It's not pinching nearly as much flow. And then we have the Magnafuel, which has a much larger filter and it has a larger body. This is a two and a half inch body right here as far as this side. I forget what the length is here, but they also have a lot larger filter, which is going to add even more flow to help get to your pump and not starve your motor whenever you're making power. Now, a lot of people, they'll dyno their cars with setups like this, but here's the thing you have to know. When you're doing a dyno hit, you're not doing first, second, third at the very end of the quarter. You're doing short hits. A lot of people I've noticed will have fueling issues on the top side of the track. They don't know why, but I would say check your filters because there's, you always want to look at what is going to be the most restrictive part in your fuel system, check everything, not just your fittings, not just your lines. Also look at your filters inside your filter bodies to determine if that's gonna be the correct filter for your application. Okay, so we've removed the 10. You can see a difference in size, 10 and the 12. I need to open this hole up, so I'm gonna use a Dremel. 
open it up until this guy starts to fit in there and we can screw it in. Close. All right. So now I'm gonna sand it and then we're gonna vacuum it out. I'm gonna use a sanding roll to speed this process up. I don't know if someone's gonna ask, why didn't you use a hole saw? For number one, a hole saw, you need a surface to center it so it doesn't like jump all around. And number two is the next size up my hole saws are way too big. This thing is full of lead from the lead gas, so I'm gonna actually rinse it out and then give it a good cleaning with this and let it bake in the sun to get everything out. So I'm glad I did that because you can see some more shit came out. I rinsed it several times, wiped it down. So I'm gonna let this bake in here. It'll, the, um, the heat from the sun will definitely get all that water out. So I'm let this bake there for a while. And uh, I'm gonna clean up over there and we'll come back and finish her up. All right, so everything is nice and dry and clean. Of course it comes with these Teflon or these PTFE little gaskets. I'm just gonna screw this guy in. Now when it comes to sticking your hand in here, it's really hard to get a fit them all on there. So hopefully I want to go out and buy a big old socket, but we're going to try. Oh, it's tight. Easier said than done, guys, because you really can't see what in the hell you're doing. Let me get a flashlight. So I got my little spark plug looker adder thing. Has some LEDs. Hopefully give me enough light that I can see in there, which it looks like I can. Got it. Yachty. It's a little bit tighter. I know it's going to loosen up on me. I can do shit. Ah. All right, that should work. Good God, that's starting to hurt. Look at that. So what used to be a sitting unit is now a vent. This drill hole right there. And this is my vent since this used to be the vent and it's now the return. So that's what this guy is for. One thing I did for the return, I didn't have a problem when I was only doing like, you know, eight PSI, but I think when boost hits, and it starts doing like, you know, 15, 20 PSI. It's gonna have a lot more fuel going through there. So what I'm gonna do is aim it at the back here. So it'll hit this and then go down instead of splashing directly in the fuel. So what I did is I took a 10 AN and I cut the end off. That was a complete 90 and now it's hitting the wall. So we'll see how that works. If not, I can take it off. Okay, so PTFE is a little different than your typical AN. You got this little guy right here, which has to go around this. So you have to peel back the braided area, like so. Now, if you get the kit from Evil Energy, they have these little things that fit in here that make your life easier. So we're gonna have to get a little creative with ours. We'll show you in a second. Make sure we can get this guy up in there. So we're gonna tap this on until it's fully seated in there. 
All right, see it's fully seated. And now I'm gonna use this since we don't have a tool. And we're going to get that in there and I just pull it the f out. Not good. All right, so I got a slightly bigger socket and you know what? Let's use a little bit of a two cycle for some a lube. And I used a bigger one this time. Tap it in there. All right. Let's see if we can't slide this guy up in there. It won't go in your, ah, oh, ah, oh, it went in its home. I'm gonna put just a little bit of lube on these guys right here. Lube is your friend, guys. Don't go in dry. Mm-hmm. All right, so now I'm just gonna start it like this. I like the push right here. You get it started so it doesn't loosen its way out. Then I'm gonna take my foot, so I can push right here and take the fit them all and tighten her down. Yes, sir. Super easy. See, see how easy it is? And you'll get this nice and tight. Once it gets like, you know, good and tight like that, we're just gonna say that it's good. It shouldn't leak at all. If you do it too tight, you'll strip out those aluminum threads. Well, all right, there we have it. Now, one thing I want you guys to notice, I see a lot of people don't do this. The pump, filter, all this from the sump is the lowest point and it's behind everything. So when I take off, all the fuel is gonna push it to this guy. I know some people have put these or other pumps above all this and kind of over here in their bed, but that's not where you want it. And that was why when I did my radiator, I didn't put it here. I put it closer that way because this is very, very important. I know this to be true from other stuff I've done in the past with like this to Holly black pumps and all that. As long as you put all this behind your sump and below it, you should be A-OK, -okay, good to go. You won't have any problems. That's just my experience. Many people say they haven't had that problem but I have had problems doing it the other way. 370 something dollars later, we have a 12 feed to our eliminator pump. Hopefully this has been helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and peace.